I'll show you how to round objects in Blender using loop cuts, bevel, edge crease and shading smooth. Starting with the loop cuts and subdivision surface, I'll show you how to round the default cube like this. Here are the loop cuts. So sharp, rounded, loop cuts showing now. So starting with your default cube, I'll color this one green. I'm going to apply subdivision surface modifiers. Now if we're in edit mode, what we can see is this bounding box. That's the real geometry of this item. And if I increase the viewport, you'll see there's more and more divisions. Now I want to keep this square, but I don't want to have these perfectly square edges because nothing exists like that in the real world. So I'm going to put in loop cuts. So I'm going to do Control R, and when I hover over this edge, and then left click, I've now got some arrows. I move this out to the edge, and I'll repeat this several times. Control R, left click, move to the right, and click. Control R, left click, move up, left click. Control R, click, move down, left click. Couple more to go, control R, left click, move to the left, left click, control R, click, move to the right, left click. So if we have a look at that, I rounded the corners. If I increase the viewport subdivision surface, you'll see I've got some nice round corners. In addition to that, I can, so with the cube highlighted, we click mesh shading, smooth faces. So if we look really closely, we can see that those faces look nice and smooth. This is a pretty um, early method to try. It comes with its pros and cons. Um, I've been using it a lot, and I think that it will be a valuable asset to your model making uh, toolkit. The next method will be using bevels and subdivision surface. There's a couple of ways here. I'll show you both. Um, there are pros and cons again. So the next I'm going to show you is beveling. So I'll start by adding a subdivision surface just like before and I'm in edit mode. With the mouse off to the side here, and I go Control B, if I move towards nothing, if I move away, then I get a little bit of something going on. It's a little confusing, so I'll take a couple of steps back. So if I just Command Z two, three times, and to start with no modifiers applied. If I go Control B, and then move towards nothing, but if I move away, in edit mode of course, control B and I move away, you'll notice that I start getting this bevel. Now if I, before I click, if I scroll on the mouse wheel, you'll see I get more and more and more divisions. I'll just leave it there I think. And then if I left click and drop it, it's quite rounded. But if I zoom in on this edge, you'll see that it is um, a, a series of planes. So if I was to add subdivision surface after that, then that will be a nice effect. But if I undo several times, no modifier, add subdivision surface, tab into edit mode, and try control B now, it still works. And again, starting fresh. I can do this with a uh, bevel modifier. Now this is probably best, but it's the hardest. So this is non-destructive editing. So I can um, play around with a whole bunch of these settings. So things like offset, 
we saw that with pulling away with the mouse so I'm just increasing and decreasing the offset I can have more segments so there's more segments there if I tab into edit mode you'll still see that it's the bounding box still shows simple numbers of edges um, various other different settings you can play with um, but I think that's probably um, enough for the basics if you want to permanently apply it you can if you want to add an additional subdivision surface modifier you can the order let me just collapse these matters a lot so I've got bevel on top and subdivision below so if I move subdivision up it changed now bevels at the bottom and subdivisions at the top if I move bevel back to the top then you'll see um, that works a little better and I would still add um, in the mesh shading smooth faces so I think that's a really um, effective way it's certainly more advanced um, beginning users will often run into a lot of uh, problems using this bevel modifier but it is non-destructive so I could completely remove these I could switch them off and it just goes back to largely looking like my regular cube especially if I was to go back to shading um, and go flat faces and it will just look completely the way it did from the beginning I haven't modified any of the topology or geometry whatever you feel like calling it but that is a non-destructive way of rounding um, and I think it's certainly something that you should add to your arsenal a third way is to use edge crease with subdivision surface A third way is to use edge crease. So if I start with subdivision surface, we're getting familiar with this now. Essentially around the outside we've got a whole bunch of edges, that's the real geometry. So if I go control E, it brings up the edge menu. So this, all of this long list here is all the different things you can do with edges. So we're going to edge crease, which is shift E. So you could use the shortcut shift E to get straight to it. So with that, I've got a little arrow left and right. So if I pull away, you'll notice the strength of that edge and its effect on the cube that's inside of it. Obviously, if you do just one edge, only one will be um, strengthened. If I was to undo that and highlight all and just jump straight to Shift E, and then I pull away you'll notice I'm getting more and more influence if I go all the way out it's completely square up in the very top left of screen there is the number crease so I could type that number in and drop that at the moment it's at 0.962 but if I was to for example type um, 0 0.95 and then return then that's locked in Let's have a look at what result we actually get. So it's slightly rounded off every little angle. But if we look at the viewport, even if we turn it all the way up, you'll get a nice rounded shape. But you'll also see um, it's a little different. You'll still get a pretty good result with it. It's one that I think works really well because you can, if I undo several times, you could have that influence um, perhaps everywhere except one side for example and just go shift E and what you'll notice is I've got curve around one side and the others are marked very sharply maybe I want on this side deselect and just get that edge shift E and perhaps I want to have a little bit of influence on that side 
So it's not permanent. You can always adjust these. So if I get that one and the one on the far side, Shift E, move in a bit. you can see I've got different amounts of influence. Now it does matter of course what level of subdivision surface you have applied and of course if we check in with our mesh if we check in with our mesh shading smooth faces and that'll make it smooth so we jump out of that into object mode again so an edge crease offers yet another way to give some rounding. I hope this video helped you. I hope that you get a whole lot more um, success with your modeling in the future and best of luck with your model making.